This video is going to explain why different ionic compounds have different lattice enthalpy values. And first of all, let's remind ourselves what we mean by lattice enthalpy. It's the energy required to separate one mole of an ionic compound into its gaseous ions. The key bits in this definition are one mole of the ionic compound and gaseous ions. To explain this with some examples, let's draw a potential energy diagram. And on this diagram, I'm going to mark a dotted line, which is the point at which my ions have been separated. Let's now consider where lithium fluoride might be on my potential energy diagram. Because oppositely charged ions attract each other, we'd expect these ionic lattices to have very low potential energy, meaning they're very stable because oppositely charged ions are positioned next to each other. In order to separate these ions, I'm going to need to increase the potential energy in that system by, for example, heating that substance. And the data booklet tells me that to do so is going to require about 1000 kilojoules per mole before those ions are separated. Let's now compare the value for sodium fluoride. You'll notice that the position of sodium fluoride is slightly higher in potential energy than lithium fluoride, suggesting it's less stable. And if I check in the data booklet, it tells me that it requires about 930 kilojoules per mole before those ions are separated. So why then is it easier to separate sodium fluoride compared to lithium fluoride? Well, there are two criteria we need to consider here. The first is the magnitude of charge on my ions. And the second criteria is the size of the ions. Let's first consider criteria one. And in this case, if I look at the magnitude of charge on each ion in lithium fluoride and sodium fluoride, we can see they're identical. The lithium and the sodium have one positive charge and the fluorides have one negative charge. So in this example, the magnitude of charge is not going to be a factor. Let's look at the second criteria. Well, in my diagrams, I can see that lithium ions are smaller than sodium ions. And I could check this in the data booklet by looking at the ionic radius. So why is a smaller ion going to be more stable in an ionic lattice? Well, the closer together oppositely charged particles can get, the more stable they're going to be, or the lower potential energy they're going to be. And if I were to measure this by drawing a line between the middle of the lithium ion and the fluoride ion, and comparing it to the same line in sodium fluoride, I can see that the lithium and fluorine can pack closer together will therefore have stronger electrostatic forces of attraction and be more stable. Let's now add potassium fluoride to my potential energy diagram and see if this trend continues. In this case, the potassium ion is even bigger than the sodium ion, so we'd expect a smaller value for the lattice enthalpy. And if you check in the data booklet, it's a value about 800. So to summarize, if my ion is smaller, it can pack more closely to the oppositely charged ion and therefore have a greater electrostatic attraction, making it more stable or have a lower potential energy. And this means that I'm going to require more energy in order to break those ions apart. Let's now consider an example where we have an ion, a positive ion with two positive charges. Let's take magnesium fluoride. In this case, you'll notice that magnesium fluoride is even lower in potential energy or more stable than lithium fluoride. And the data booklet will give a value somewhere around 2,500 kilojoules per mole in order to separate those ions. To explain it, let's check our two criteria again. First of all, criteria one. And what you'll notice if I compare lithium and magnesium is that magnesium has double the amount of positive charges as lithium. 
This means about double the electrostatic attraction with the fluoride ions, so that kind of explains why it takes so much more energy to separate. Let's also check criteria two. Well, the size of the ions, they're drawn approximately to scale in these diagrams. They're pretty similar in size. So in this case, criteria two is not an important factor. In summary, if the ions, and it could be positive or negative ions, have a greater magnitude of charge, we would expect much greater lattice enthalpy values. And that's because with greater magnitudes of charge, we see greater electrostatic forces of attraction in my ionic lattice. Therefore, we require more energy to pull them apart. Hopefully, this video was of some help. As a quick summary before you go, the differences in lattice enthalpy can be explained by two factors. The first is the magnitude of charge on the ions, and the second is the size of the ions.